What have I done? <laughs> change things around just wanted a, the grass is always greener and all that so uh, this is actually night two we're in Nina we find out a few creases and last night we got a couple of hours absorbed on the cocoon nebula up on the tail end of Cygnus images look great I used the autofocus and the plate solved with ASTAP and it was solving in half a second on each downloaded image so uh, I could be out by some margin and get centered within about a minute and a half literally it's fantastic once we're up and running my good friend and neighbor is gonna pop out at some point and uh, I've got a little uh, astronomy challenge in store <laughs> uh, so uh, you might laugh when you see what it is, but stick around and and uh, yeah, I'll try and vlog a little bit of what I've got in store for him. Okay, if you're new to the channel, please hit the bell icon, hit subscribe. There's always weird and wonderful things going on in Wayne's Cave. Another beautiful subframe coming on Nina tonight. Probably can't see anything except Jupiter just there. Good guiding in PhD, which I haven't used in quite some time. But our first successful imaging setup and run in Nina. Okay, guys, I just wanted to interject with our vlog. Um, just first of all, just to uh, explain a couple of things. Originally the vlog was going to be based on just a couple of hiccups I came across when getting the system connected with ASCOM, Windows and all the rest of it um, and how to troubleshoot if you guys also found a couple of these hiccups in your situation and, and the ways that I, I sort of worked around those. Uh, but I will go through uh, one particular sort of connection issue which I sort of worked out after a, a bit of research and sort of 24 hours of pain uh, but quite a simple fix just if you know how so I'll share that with you guys in another video and also just to, just to explain further what our astro challenge was uh, I had un I had covered up my little 80 mm um, Orion short tube and I had worked out I, I figured out a way of here it is <laughs> just connecting him up to a to a rail and I, I actually dug out an old tripod that I've rescued from a skip once and wondered if we could manually find Jupiter and Saturn as that's reasonably uh, in a good location at, at this present time being September 2021 and 
I dug out the only eyepiece I own, which came with a kit, telescope kit, this nine mil, a celestial nine millimeter uh, eyepiece. And he, he was dead excited when he came out and I un uncovered, unveiled a big uh, uh, unveiling of this little baby scope sat there. And I told him what we was gonna do. And he said, never, we're never gonna see Jupiter, are we? <laughs> and uh, we actually did, we, could, we saw Jupiter. <laughs> We could even make out the main sort of red band and the red spot running through the centre. Two moons to the left and there was two moons to the right as well. Uh, and also even Saturn, as small as it was, with its rings. And that, that was just great to see my neighbours' faces in, in awe of, of um, viewing that with their own eyes through this little, tiny little 80mm, what used to be my old guide scope. Uh, so... Yeah, there's a little clip at the end of, of some nighttime talk as we're trying to hold our phones up to an eyepiece to see if we can project it onto our phone camera. But uh, yeah, so that all sort of got a bit in intensive, so I didn't actually think to uh, try and record and vlog um, uh, some of those uh, activities through the night. But we did carry on shooting the cocoon through my main rig, the Esprit 120 and the QHY268. And you'll see the, the unveiling of a quick process. Just for your information, I didn't calibrate any of the subs with darks, flats or dark flats. I just banged them together because I, I tried to take some new darks, uh, but the overscan area was unfortunately included in my dark frame. So when I come to process, the uh, software wouldn't allow the darks to be processed because the geometry of my lights didn't match the darks because it include that extra overscan area which then changed the, the geometry of my frame instead of being x pixels by x pixels long and wide the darks were bigger frames in, in, in effect than my light so I just carried on anyway I wanted it sort of test uh, some new uh, processing uh, 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 add-ons in PixInsight, uh, which I'm dead chuffed about. I'm using Starnet and using uh, Adam Block's uh, process that, that somebody had written a script for Adam Block's method of star de-emphasizing. And I really loved how this script worked. I highly suggest it. Um, if I remember, I'll try and put in the de in the description below the uh, address that you can put into PixInsight to pick up that script. Uh, I think we're about there now. The uh, the way that um, the those couple of days panned out with using Nina and Ascom and um, the processing of the picture that I got in Nina for the first time, my first light of Nina. So let's jump back in and I'll leave you to the outro.
tell me if you see. <laughs> it's so hard. Oh. Did you? Is that something? Or is that one? There it is, isn't it? No. That's the camera behind. That's done. God, it's so difficult. Oh, no yeah. One... What? Here's the camera. Is it on now? Off the muckler has come off. Where? Up there. This isn't it? Oh, yeah.